earlier this morning, the heart of the Treaty 6 reconciliation was the recipient of an ATV Financial Indigenous Programming Grant. Uh, on behalf of ATB, we are proud to support the Truth and Reconciliation journey here in Lloydminster area by donating $5,000 to the Heart of Tree 6 for a recently started transportation initiative. This provides shuttle service to First Nations and Métis community members who don't have any means of transportation. The partnership is not only with the city, but Border City Connects has also stepped up to provide the transportation services. Children uh, can be affected at school if they have a barrier and if bar a barrier is transportation and their mothers and fathers can't get to the grocery store and that's a barrier for them, it's going to trickle down and it's going to affect their education. So I would say that this uh, directly impacts some of the calls to action within the education realm. Border City Connects is pleased to be a part of this pilot project and put their vehicles to good use. So for us, it works out very nicely. It just, uh, you know, we've got three buses that are out there all day long moving people. And so we're able to incorporate uh, those individuals needing to get groceries and just into our, regular, into our regular schedule. So it's worked out very well from that aspect. The Heart of Treaty 6 members are planning to do a six-month trial period and hope to see more sponsors in the future. The City of Lloydminster took another step in their new event facility project by unveiling the temporary name for the facility. It is with great pleasure to introduce to you Lloydminster Place. Lloydminster Place, although a temporary name will represent the City's plan for the facility, they want it to be the home for Lloydminster events, people and sport. The temporary name will help the project take the next step. This facility will serve from the youngest of members of our community basically right to our seniors. They may not be out skating, they'll be enjoying the, the recreation, the sportsmanship, the events that are happening in the community. So it's important to be as inclusive as we can for everybody. With the Centennial Civic Centre reaching the end of its life, the new facility will be the home to the Lloydminster Bobcats, minor hockey teams, Lakeland Rustlers Hockey and other local programs. Head coach and GM of the Bobcats, Nigel Dubé, is looking forward to the future of the project and how it will help the team. Our relationship has continued to grow with the city and, and with the other user groups across the board. For our organization, it's huge. Uh, you look around our league in the Alberta Junior Hockey League and, and there's many new arenas and uh, now we'll be able to have that conversation too as well. And uh, you know, when we're looking at recruiting players, it's a big part that kids nowadays look at is, is where are you playing and, and what's the facility like. And um, obviously this is a step in the right direction for our organization. With the temporary name set, the city is looking for residents input. An online survey is available until March 5th, which gives people the chance to get more information about the facility and voice what they want to see at Lloydminster Place. Seating capacity, we haven't nailed that down completely, but we can tell you it's between 2,000 and 2,500 seats is what we're looking at. What are you looking for as a community inside a, an event centre such as this? We hope to host concerts and other events that will fit our community that can't be held somewhere else in the community. The survey is available at lloydminsterplace.ca. Early signs of ageing are often noticed through changes in the body maybe a bad back, or even an aching ankle. But a part of our anatomy that's sometimes disregarded when it comes to the subject of getting older is our brains. With more from a Canadian study on the aging of our minds, here's Tate Laycraft. Dr. Kendra Ferber is an assistant professor with the UBC Northern Medical Program, as she and her team are working to pinpoint the causes of cognitive aging. The biggest thing for me is just uh, letting people understand that there's so many cells in our brain and we've always been very focused on those, those nerve cells, but they all kind of have to work together as a team. Through the use of mid-IR beamline technology, Ferber and her team are studying biochemical changes in the brain. The goal is to better understand those changes so we can one day slow or even reverse the damage of time. So it's understanding, um, I guess, those process bases processes in the brain um, that's happening so we can either kind of prevent that damage or degradation or else promote the, the brain to repair itself. 
At the center of the study is the research of myelin, an insulating layer that forms around our nerves, permitting the transmission of electrical impulses. We're interested in kind of all the molecules that, that make up that myelin and how they might change in aging and disease, um, and really what that means in terms of your brain function. Ferber added that exercise, sleep, and a healthy diet can benefit our cognitive function. The study is taking place at the Canadian Light Source Research Facility in Saskatoon. Tate Laycraft, Primetime Local News. It's time now for this week's edition of Retrospect. Here's Blake Nate. week in retrospect. Roses sell out the border city during Valentine's of 92 as procrastinators furiously phone florists. Valentine's Day, the occasion florists dream of and dread all the same. It's the day customers come in droves demanding flowers, flowers, and yet more flowers, with the predominant choice being roses. But for those who wait too long, the roses are soon gone. Sorry about that. Thanks for calling anyway. Bye-bye. And when flowers won't do, there are always balloons. <laughs> And when there aren't balloons and roses, there are always stuffed Valentine's Day bears. It's a day that keeps cash registers ringing. Yeah, it's always probably the busiest single day of the year there is for us, and it always seems to be one of those days when people don't really plan ahead to order, so they all just pop in and think they can get it instantly, and we try our best to handle them as they come. And we take a look at the Love Day trends in 1997. I love you, and I always will. Happy Valentine's. Thank you. <laughs> Beware, you could find yourself in the path of Cupid's arrow. Many love-struck Valentines hit the stores today, trying to find that perfect gift for their special someone. Oh uh, yeah, cards and maybe chocolates and maybe flowers. Maybe um, some flowers. I have no clue. <laughs> well, I'm going to take her out for... Uh, lunch, I guess. Maybe a and I see they got some hamburgers. <laughs> of course, there's endless possibilities for your sweetheart, from something cuddly to something a little more daring. But if you prefer a true classic, candy and flowers are always a hit. Well, I think they speak volumes about how, how uh, people or the fellas feel about their wives and girlfriends, and they're an expression of love. So. And that's all for this week. In Retrospect. Retrospect this week is brought to you by Webb's Ford. Worth your while to drive the extra mile. Webb's Ford in Vermilion. Now for a look at your Valentine's Day weather, we'll go to Shelby Clark. Thanks so much, Jazz. And yes, happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. Here in the border city, we are sitting at minus 11. With that windshield, it does feel closer to minus 20. Um, so it, we have cooled down just slightly, but it's still a beautiful day to hang out with your Valentines today. Maybe go out for a small stroll along the sidewalk. Try not to slip, though, on the ice. But we still are seeing a beautiful day. Uh, we have seen a little bit more cloud coverage throughout the day and switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan here. On the Alberta side, we've cooled down just a bit compared to what we've been seeing last week for sure. A lot of minus 9 degrees on the board here. Minus 7 at Lac La Biche and Vagreville, while Mar Wayne is at minus 11, minus 10 in Vermilion and St. Paul, while down in Wainwright and Provost, they're sitting at minus 7, minus 8 degrees, while Edmonton is slightly warmer, just seeing that minus 3 mark. Switching over now to our Saskatchewan side here, they're, they've cooled down quite a bit as well. Most spots seeing around minus 12 degrees at the moment. Minus 13 up in Isle Cross while Pearson is at minus 10, minus 9 in Meadow Lake while St. Walberg is seeing minus 11 and down in Macklin they are at minus 8 as well. And for North Battleford overnight they will be going down to a low of minus 14 and they will be seeing around a 60% chance of some flurries throughout the night there. It will continue tomorrow in their morning at minus 9 throughout the day with a little bit more cloudier skies. 
For Cold Lake, overnight they'll be going down to a low of minus 13 degrees. They will be seeing a high chance of some snowfall as well throughout the night. Tomorrow it will stop though there in the morning. They will be seeing minus 11 throughout the day with a mix of some sun and cloud. And for here in the border city, we'll be going down to a low of minus 12. So we aren't seeing a too bad uh, evening low temperature there than what we have been seeing. Definitely still seeing some warmer temperatures. Uh, we are going to be seeing a high chance of some flurries start off in the evening throughout the night, which will continue into tomorrow morning where we will be seeing minus 9 throughout the day. Now switching over to our three-day forecast for here in the border city. As I was saying, we will be seeing some slightly cooler temperatures compared to what we have been seeing last week, but not too bad. Wednesday, we will be seeing minus 17, so we will be cooling down quite a bit to that double digit temperature but we will be seeing a little bit more sun peaking behind those clouds while on Thursday we'll see a high chance of some snowfall once again at minus 5 with a low of minus 26. That's our first look at your Valentine's Day forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Well, we now have a new Super Bowl champion, and no, it's not the New England Patriots or a team with Tom Brady on it. In fact, it is the LA Rams. They defeated the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday night, 23-20. to Thomas Wildman joins myself now. And Thomas, you know, just starting things off, what an accomplishment this is for the LA Rams. Yeah, for sure, Evan. You got to really think about this team's only won one Super Bowl in their past. That was back in 2000 with the greatest show on turf. And so this is a team that hasn't exactly back when the, it has been with St. Louis before they moved to L.A. And they just weren't having that great of a years from 2002 now. But now they've with players like Aaron Donald and now Drew Stafford, they've kind of created that core and made a great team. And so getting the win, they were came up short a few years ago against Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. And so it's a huge accomplishment for a team that's only had one Super Bowl, as I mentioned. And it's really refreshing to see, especially as the Bengals were up against them. Teams in the four big sports that haven't had championships or lots of championship success being successful. And the Rams are another great story to add to that list that has kind of happened in the late, in the beginning of the 2020s. And Thomas, you know, obviously a, a, a great success for the organization, but, you know, even better for these players who actually, you know, put their heart and soul on that field. You can just tell from, you know, looking at faces after the game, these players, it, it really means the world to them winning the Super Bowl, obviously. Well, for sure. It's the it's the big win, right? Like the personal achievements of like for Aaron Donald, for example, he's been the defensive player of the year. He won rookie of the year as a rookie. Like so many been a pro bowler, but those none, none of that really is. It's important. But when you have that ring, you you are on a team, the best team in the league at the point. And that's a huge thing. And for a player like Aaron Donald, who has so many other accolades, but kind of it legitimizes him as one of the greats that he's now been on a championship team. Uh, another player who is one of the greats and will go will be in the Hall of Fame like Aaron Donald, Odell Beckham Jr., he just he kind of came at the end of the Giants kind of they were a really good team for a little bit there and he kind of came at the end he had that excellent catch that one of the greatest catches of all time but he's and with the Browns he wasn't they were just trying to they wasn't ever really having that playoff success and he got injured in that in this game but when he, you could see it on his face too he was so happy to finally have a ring uh Drew Stafford another player who with the Lions could have went down if he would have stayed there forever he could have gone down in history as a great quarterback who never even came close to sniffing a Super Bowl but now he has one and so really happy for all of them Vaughn Miller gets another one uh, he had won one with the Broncos as the Super Bowl MVP a few years back. And so and lots of just players who are kind of coming to the end of their careers, getting another ring. That's, well, Vaughn Miller getting another ring and those other guys getting their first. That's just huge. And again, like I was saying, you love to see some other guys getting to have the accolades instead of as much as Tom Brady is the goat of football. We'd like to kind of spread it out a little bit. 
Now, Thomas, you mentioned Aaron Donald a couple times so far throughout this panel. So let's jump uh, to the defenses. Obviously, either team uh, defense has really stepped up 23 to 20, a relatively low scoring game here uh, for Cincinnati. Two interceptions and they pretty much eliminated any sort of run game that the Rams had. And for the Rams, it was all about getting pressure onto Joe Burrow. Just talk about either of these two teams defensive performances uh, in this past game. Well, for sure, those interceptions, that's a huge thing in the game, especially in the Super Bowl. When you're giving up your possession, no matter where you are down the field, like if you're closer to your own end, to the other team's end zone, that can set up for a real easy score. Or if you're going down the field and you're trying to get a either a touchdown or a field goal, you're just... If you lose that ball like that, you're just in so much trouble. So that's a really great job by Zach Taylor and the Cincinnati Bengals. But if we had to pick a team that definitely played defense better, and it shows because they won the game, that was the Rams. And, I mean, the Bengals have had struggles in protecting Joe Burrow throughout the season. He had 70 total times he was sacked this year. And just, it was... Aaron Donald, again, an excellent player. He had so many pressures in that second half. He kind of had a slower first half, but then, and again, Vaughn Miller, who was also one of the greatest defensive players in the league. Just a bunch of great players. Jalen Ramsey was great as the cornerback. He gave um, Jamar Chase some trouble throughout the game. And so many, so many great players and that were able on that defense that were able to shut it down. And of course, Sean McVay is probably one of the best coaches in the league and him winning a Super Bowl. I didn't mention this, but him winning a Super Bowl that legitimizes him as one of the greats. And he is the youngest, one of the youngest coaches to win the Super Bowl. Now, while the Bengals were not able to get it done, I'm sure uh, we will be seeing them uh, here relatively soon. I mean, just looking at their core, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, not that old, T. Higgins, all these guys, you know, just very, very young to the NFL. So I would not be surprised if we did see the Bengals return to the Super Bowl in the near future. Thomas, thank you very much for taking this time and joining me. Thank you, Evan. It's always a pleasure. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. Today I'm joined with Sandra Brown from the city of Lloydminster to talk about the Winterfest happening next Monday for Family Day. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Oh, well, thank you for having us. So do you mind telling us a little bit more about this event? Uh, Winterfest is a traditional annual event which happens every family day. So this year it's on Monday, uh, February 21st, runs from 10 o'clock in the morning till three in the afternoon. And uh, we've actually expanded it this year to include four different locations. And what sort of activities will be held? Uh, well, Winterfest is, is a family event. So we, all the activities are catered to families. Uh, the Service Sports Centre will have uh, public skating, both indoors and outdoors, uh, shinny. Uh, you can uh, take, uh, take your photo in, on an actual Zamboni, which is something that a lot of people haven't had a chance to do. Uh, the Lloydminster Skating Club will be doing some performances in the morning. Uh, both field houses will be full of bounce houses and different interactive games. Uh, we have a craft and games room where you can make some personal props and then go to our selfie station and pose and take some photos. Uh, musical entertainment, of course, with the prairie dogs. And something new, uh, you can uh, build a snowman in our north field and decorate with new or gently used toques, mittens or scarves, and we'll make sure that we get those to, to folks who who could use them to keep themselves warm. And uh, that's our service sports center activities. We also have activities at Bud Miller. We have a skating party complete with music and a DJ, which would be a lot of fun for everyone. Uh, Shinny on the ice. Uh, Winterfest is well known for its horse drawn wagon rides. Uh, we'll have some sliding and snow painting. Uh, the Lloydminster Museum and Archives, uh, we have sponsored admission thanks to Richardson's Jewelry. So you can make a craft in one of their studios, tour the exhibits, and uh, roast mar marshmallows around the campfire. And the Lloydminster Curling Club will be at the Lloydminster Golf and Curling Centre, where you can try a new winter sport for anyone that hasn't tried curling before, or bring your family out and do some curling. Do people need to sign up for these activities, or is it come and go as you please? 
It's just uh, come as you go. Um, this is a first year that we've had four different locations. And uh, to encourage everyone to come to each location, enjoy the uh, unique activities, uh, we have a Winterfest passport. So you can get your passport stamped at each location and then enter into a draw at any one of the, at the locations. Draw will be made on Wednesday. Uh, winners will be announced on the City of Lloydminster's Facebook page. And the prize, the grand prize for this draw is a two hour bounce house rental from All About Bouncing. Where can people go to find out more information about this event? Uh, for more information uh, for Winterfest, you can go to our website, lloydminster.ca slash Winterfest. And there's a detailed list of all the loca locations and then all the activities that will be at, the, at each location. Um, and just a huge shout out um, to our presenting sponsor this year is LNA CPA LLP, formerly known as Lucky and Associates. Uh, they've come on board and a um, uh, huge shout out as well to all our other amazing sponsors. And do any of these activities have a cost to them or are they all free? I know the, uh, the entire, um, all the activities for Winterfest are free. There is no admission charges, uh, no activity charges at all. And we're hoping for some nice warm weather, um, but we do encourage everyone to bundle up. Uh, masks will be mandatory at all the indoor activities, of course. And um, we're hoping that to see a big crowd come out this year. You had mentioned a few sponsors there. So who was involved in making this event happen? We have quite a list. Um, Heritage Optical, Relay Distributing, Synergy Credit Union, City Furniture, Cal Rock Industries, First Onsite, Guardian Plumbing and Heating, G Force Diesel, Lloydminster and District Co op, Nissan Lloydminster, Nordic Building Systems, Northern Factory Workwear, Rep Tech. Uh, Tim Hortons is providing uh, refreshments at all the locations, um, Quiznos, and Hampton Inn Hotel. You had mentioned masking. Will there be any other safety precautions that the team is putting together? Uh, we'll be shutting down uh, the bounce units uh, randomly one at a time just to uh, clean and sanitize the insides. Um, uh, we'll have extra staff and volunteers on hand helping out with cleaning any, any touch points at any of the activities. And we're, we're hoping to um, promote uh, physical distancing as much as possible to keep everyone safe, of course. And that's one of the main reasons why we've picked four different locations and to, to spread out the crowd a little bit more, both uh, at the indoor and outdoor activities. And is there anything else that you would like to mention? Um, I, th I think I would like to encourage everyone to come out. Uh, it's it'll be family day uh, next Monday, actually. And it's a great event to come out, enjoy winter, be active and have some fun with your family. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today. Well, thank you very much. Handing off, we're taking another quick look at your seven day forecast here. We will be seeing some snowfall tomorrow, so we'll get ready to see some with minus nine throughout the day. Wednesday, we'll see a little bit more sun peeking behind those clouds, and we will be warming up a bit more on Thursday, but we will be seeing an 80% chance of some more flurries. So make sure you're keeping your shovels out ready to go. Friday, we'll see some more snowfall at minus 14 to start off the weekend, then seeing a warmer Saturday at minus 3 throughout the day. Then Sunday, we'll cool down once again to those double-digit temperatures at minus 14 to end it off. And next Monday, we'll see a little bit more sun. Thank you, Shelby, for another look at our weather forecast. And thank you so much for joining us on Primetime Local News, and we'll have more in the second hour.